All right, guys, so this is part two in the building of the Gandhias case. If you've missed part one, I'll go ahead and link it for you guys so you can check it out. If you've watched the previous one though, you'll remember there was a little fumble with the Corsair liquid cooling unit. And in this video, I'll explain what happened there, but obviously it's working now. So let's check it out. All right, so we have all of the hardware in the system. Now all we need to do is cable everything and we left the video card for last because it's going to block off everything down here and I've already gone ahead in the previous video which if you haven't seen yet I'll go ahead and link up above that video is showing you guys how I got to this point okay so I'm grabbing here all of the cables for the front panel IO the power button the reset button the hard drive or SSD activity light all right, and the light itself for the front of the case. And I'm going to slide it back through here. We're gonna bring it down through the back of the case, out through here, or maybe down through here, so that we can connect the front panel header. And then also we're going to be putting the HD audio and USB port as well. now that we have the cables fit through there so towards the rear of the case there's a little opening right over here and then right above that is where the HD audio header is so I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that in there it's not gonna look pretty right now but just staging okay and then right here is where the front panel power button reset button the hd activity light or ssd activity light as well as the usb 2.0 header is going to be so i'm just going to slide in everything through here now so that the cables might not want to stay but we already know that we need to pull them through there so we we'll just might have to fish through them. All right, so let me zoom you into the front panel header. That's the one that most people have uh, the most problem with, but it's gonna be different on every single motherboard. Okay, so first off, it's going to be the HD LED. Now they're also, aside from being uh, difficult sometimes, they're also etched on the case on the motherboard. Maybe not etched, but silk screen. Okay, so that one is HD LED. And then power switch. And then we have here power LED all right so we have that plugged in then right here is the USB 2.0 header so just pushing it through over here and then going to go ahead and connect it now you want to make sure you'll notice there's a block pin right over here Make sure you match it up with the open pin right down here. That's gonna be turning it around. Okay, so we have that connected. And again, it will be different every motherboard, but I'm showing you the basics of the case. Then right over here is the front panel HD header. All right, easy enough. Okay, so now the H115i requires USB to be plugged in right over here on the pump itself. So we're gonna go ahead and just plug that in now over here. Now, the bad thing about this board, it's a great board, but the bad thing is it only has one USB 2.0 header. But you'll notice, if you remember, over here we plugged in the USB 3.0 header. So down here, 
there's another USB 3.0 header. So I bought this adapter separately that converts USB 3.0 to USB 2.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish this cable up here on the top. Actually, let's fish it right over here. Okay, and then you'll notice down here in the bottom, I just fished the cable out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the USB 2.0 side of that cable. And now I'm just going to put the excess through down here and then plug in the USB 3.0 header to the bottom port. So looks good and it kind of blocks all the other cables as well. Cool. So now at this point, now that we have everything there, I'm going to go ahead and insert the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ultra Gamer. And I'm going to zoom you in over here so you can see how to install a video card in case you don't know how to. Okay, so first off, you'll notice this little retention mechanism here. Here it's locked, here it's open. That way you can slide in a video card. And then you're going to match these three prongs right over here they're going to come back here they're going to slip in the little holes right behind the motherboard but right inside the case so we're going to go ahead and just slide the card right in here and then push it through the pcie slot and then you're going to notice this little lever pop right back out all right, so you see pretty easy, it clicked in place. And now we just need to screw in these over here. So one second while I screw them in. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and use this screw to screw in the video card. As you can see, I have the camera very close to the computer. So I want to make sure you guys can see it all. All right, and now we'll put the last screw in this retention mechanism back in its spot. Okay, so now we have the video card in, the IO plugged in. Now we're just gonna go ahead and Plug in the liquid cooling unit and the two fans for the liquid cooling unit. So they're gonna go connected right into the pump itself, which then will connect the SATA power into the power supply, which will provide power to the pump and to the fans itself. Okay, so now since we had to put this fan and this fan into this, because the cable on this one was too short, I just had to run all the cables through here. So the pump and everything is connected up here. And now so that the pump can get CPU temperatures and everything and to power it as well, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy into CPU fan number one right up here. And again, it's gonna be different on every single motherboard. And then I'll just feed the cables through here to make it look nicer. And then this is the power. So I'm just gonna slide this back here as well. And then this is the power for the lighting on the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this as well through here. Lighting on the case, I'm sorry. Actually this, I'll go ahead and feed through up here. Okay, so we have 
this cable coming through here and this cable as well. All right, so now we're going to feed in through here. We're gonna feed right here the 24 pin cable and then right up here and the 24 pin is the ATX cable right up here we're going to feed the 8 pin CPU maybe we'll feed it through here I'm not sure just yet and then through down here we're going to feed the PCIe cables for the video card so we'll start with the thickest cable the 24 pin okay then we'll feed the 8 pin CPU power right up here it looks like we'll be feeding the two PCIe cables or actually just the single one since it's a by eight and by a, and by six. Right through here as well. Okay, so then if you remember right over here, we had the SSD. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna plug in the SATA cable into the SSD just so you can see how to do it in case you don't know how to. Okay, you can see right there. You'll notice right there, there's the little L piece and there's a little L piece here. So we just plug that in right over here. And that's it, we have the SATA data cable. And now we're going to want to use SATA power Okay, now we have the same little L thing right over here, and we have it right over here. Plug that in right there. And now we have the SATA data and the SATA power cable, so now we'll just go ahead and put the drive back in. All right, and that gives us additional cable to plug in these headers, and thankfully they reach. So I'll plug that in there and this one right down here. Perfect. Just trying to reduce the amount of cables we have going everywhere. Now, this motherboard does not have an ARGB header, so I'm not going to be able to use the uh, ARGB controls on this header, but I'll still be able to use the ARGB function, and I'll show you that as soon as I get everything cabled and powered. All right, and actually, being that I've used this power supply so many times, I don't need these extra cables, so I'm gonna tuck them away right under the drive cage and then right under the liquid cooling area. So we'll go ahead and just push that in now. Thought I was gonna need them all, but it's always better to have more and not need it than have less and need it. The additional cables, I'm gonna go ahead again under this tray. Or actually, in the tray, that works. It's the back of the case. It doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to work, right? Okay, and this is the fan header. I forgot about that guy. I'll just slip it back through the crack up here for the rear fan that I installed. Okay, so then right up here, we're going to go ahead and plug in the eight pin CPU power. This one splits up to four plus four. Okay, and now we're gonna plug in the uh, rear fan header. We're gonna plug that into the system fan right up here. Okay, so that's plugged in there. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the 24 pin connection and let's go ahead and just move that around. 24 pin ATX. Okay, so that's plugged in. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the six pin PCIe. And now the eight pin PCIe. Now this is an older power supply, so sorry it's not pretty, but hey, it works, right? Actually, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is fish it through this hole right over here. And yes, you need to plug in both. If you see two, you plug in two. If you see three, you plug in three. Whatever's there, plug it in. And I noticed as I was back there, There was one side of power I forgot about, so gonna need to pull this out. 
this mess of cabling that we kind of just shoved in there. And go ahead and plug this guy in over here. All right, so it's plugged in. Now, everything is plugged in. The system is going to work when I power it on. It's gonna take me a while to make it look pretty. I don't wanna bore you guys with that detail, so let me make it look pretty and we'll be right back. All right guys, so this is the final build. We can see here just how she looks. Everything is cabled, not incredibly pretty. Maybe I could have done a little bit better, but there was a lot of cables and this is a smaller case, so it takes a lot to hide them. Now, I apologize about the power supply. It's not the prettiest, but it is a 1200 watt. I've had it for eight years or something. She's still kicking. You don't need more than a 1200 watt, so I've never had to replace it. Now, along the back, well, it doesn't look incredibly pretty. It looks a lot better than it did before. You'll notice right here, and let me bring you in a little bit closer, right up here, then right here, and right here, and right here, and right here. See that right there? And then there's gonna be some up here as well. Now, if you remember, the case brought let's say five zip ties. This is so you could slide a zip tie through and route some cables. So that's what I did right up here. There was only about five and you can see the mess. So I used my own zip ties a lot thicker. Sadly, they wouldn't fit, but the fact that they included them is awesome. So you could just buy the really thin zip ties and they'll work there perfectly. So now I'm gonna go ahead, put everything together. This is the, my workstation, by the way. All my builds are my live actual builds. So. I'm gonna go ahead, put this where I usually put my workstation and turn around for the first time. One sec. All right, my friends, I'm gonna go ahead, turn around for the first time. Wish me luck. <laughs> huh. I don't know if you guys hear it, but there is a clicking sound. That's coming from the uh, Corsair H115i Pro. Temperatures look good. Um, looks like I may have to work with Corsair warranty on that. But aside from that, and I'll deal with that in a little bit. All right, I'm back. So the issue, oddly enough, you don't hear it now, the computer is on, and I'm still using the same H115i Pro. The issue, oddly enough, resolved itself when I installed the IQ software from Corsair. Now, I've installed it before a few times, and I've never had that issue before. When you first turn it on, or ever, never did I hear that clicking. And so I installed the IQ, and all of a sudden, it turned down. Now, the even odder part, I thought, oh, maybe it just turned off. Let me go ahead and ramp it up. So right now you hear it a little bit louder than you normally would because I have everything set on extreme. So you can hear that. And I'm gonna get closer in a minute just so that I can show you a few things about the case, but it's louder than normal and the temperatures are great. I'm at 21 degrees and it's working very well. Very odd issue, but anyway. And it had nothing to do with the case but that pump, but anyway. So let me bring you around real quick and I'm gonna show you a few things. This is not my final review of the case, but so that I can show you what it looks like when it's fully built. And then coming up next, I'm gonna do my final review after I finish doing all my testing on this case. All right, my friends, so we can see the final build inside of the case and again it is louder than it normally would be because i have everything on extreme by the way the fans are off because of the zero db technology oh there you saw it spinning a little but she is on there you can see a little bit of the power supply sticking out from that hole cut in the shroud i like that all right so top of the case we can see this is a magnetized filter if you want to see more inside you can of course you can put up here 
up to a 280 millimeter radiator, but I have an issue with this board with this heatsink right here that won't allow me to do that. So just for some of you to look out for in case you are planning on utilizing a 280 millimeter liquid cooling unit, you can see just how close that is right there. Okay. Now on the front of the case, you can see that little strobing light here. And then we can also see the USB ports. Well, and all these IO ports, how they're glowing in all their rainbow glory. I can press this button here and that changes the effects. Now, if you have an ARGB motherboard, you're able to connect the motherboard to the case and utilize the ARGB controls, but this particular motherboard does not have an ARGB header. But of course, you can still control the lights with this button here. And then if you don't want lights, just hold it for a few seconds and you turn them off. So it can be a dark case as well, or it can be an RGB case. All right, pretty cool. Now, me pressing this button, you see it's changing here, but it's not changing here. So up here, at first I thought this was a reset button, but this is actually the RGB lighting. So right up here, I'm gonna press that button. And then same way as the other one, if you press and hold it, it turns off. Let me go ahead and turn off the lights real quick so you can see it better. All right, so everything is off aside from the monitor, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on for you guys. I like the way it does that. Unfortunately, the camera lighting is on, but you can still see it, the red there. And then we have the rainbow and again, hold it down and it turns off. Same with these guys right up here, as I showed you before. I like the rainbow, so one sec while I turn the lights back on. Okay, unfortunately this is a fingertip magnet, leaves your fingerprints everywhere, but they do include a cloth in there so you can clean it out and it is nice obviously <laughs> i haven't used it but it's nice anyway now one complaint is if you notice the liquid cooling unit is up front here and it's not really a complaint it's a concern and so you notice the liquid cooling unit here there is about an inch of space between the liquid cooling and the front of the case and there is no opening there but along the sides here, you can see the vents and that help keeps it cool. And then of course, along the bottom as well. All right, now one thing I don't like, even though I am using a USB 3.0 header and a USB 2.0 header, it has one USB 3.0 here and then two USB 2.0s here. I want my third doesn't, or my, my, my fourth, sorry, my second USB 3.0, which would give me four USB ports in total. I'm not a fan of that, but anyway, over here we have 
the headphone jack and the microphone jack. Over here, the power LED and the activity light. Okay, let's go around the back. Around the back here, we can see that 120 millimeter fan. And then the IO over here. The top of the case just feels kind of short to me, but I'm used to taller cases. Not that it's a bad thing, just looks a little odd to me. All right, and then we can see here the seven PCI slots, and then the power supply down here. No frills, no thrills along the back side of the case. It is just solid here. Then along the front, I did forget to mention it, they have the Gandias logo. Looks nice. All right, so I'm going to do a lot more reviewing on this now and get back to you guys on my next video. And don't worry, I will clean it up. But uh, I wanted to get this out to you guys as soon as possible. And again, being that this is such a small case, I'm kind of surprised there's about maybe three inches right here. And then there would have been even more if I wouldn't have had the liquid cooling unit. So you can definitely fit a liquid cooling unit here. And then you'll notice that there was an opening on the bottom of the case. That way you can drop in a radiator. So that is nice. You can see it goes all the way down there. So pretty cool. My next video will be the review of this case. Again, the Gandias Argus M1 mid-tower case. All right, guys. Iggy out. See you guys.